How was that? Did, did you have any issues with any of the people there through all that time? Not at all. And you hit it right on the head. 99% of the guys are in, and women are behind Tiger, pushing for Tiger. They want to see good golf in general. They're not anti the other guys, but they're certainly rooting for Tiger more than so than the other guys. But funny you guys asked that question. The week before in Akron, I had a little incident with a guy who was harassing my guy on the a 14th hole in Akron the last day outside the ropes, rough him up pretty good. And I said, hey, listen, bud, why do you got to go there? I said, everyone's having a good time. Everyone's pulling for Tiger. If you don't like the guy, that's one thing. But you don't need to be yelling at my guy and screaming negative stuff like that. And I said, at the end of the day, if you affect him in his performance there, it affects my bottom line. So he gives me, he calls me a couple of names, and I, I go back and forth with the guy. And I said, why don't you just leave? He goes, well, if you give me $25 for the ticket that I bought today, I'll, I'll leave. And I said, here you go. Here's $25. <laughs> Did he leave? So, Did he leave? Yeah, no. So I whip out $25, and he starts to go down to 14th fairway towards the green. I said, look, pal, 25 is 25. you got to head the other way. So he starts to head the other way. He goes 20 yards down the line. And he calls me a certain other, you know, a swear word. So I run 20 yards back the other way. We're going face-to-face -face with this guy. And all of a sudden, Tiger's looking for yards, and I'm in it with this guy 20 yards down the line. So some cop has to come in, push this guy out of the way, and take him out of the tournament. Good. Well, that is awesome. What did, what did Tiger say to you when you came back to give him yardage? Well, we were so – it was a great question. We were so far to the right in the trees, and he was on his third shot, believe it or not, and we were still 150 yards away from the green. And he didn't really know what happened. He heard the commotion. He heard the guy yelling at him. So we talked about it after the fact. He didn't really know how it developed. And he says, I was wondering what happened. He goes, normally you don't take that long to the yards. I said, with a little incident down the road, he didn't have a problem with it. But actually, I got a standing ovation for kicking the guy out of there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Nicely done. Hey, look, right. you know, he gave you a number. You know, that's the whole you thing in negotiations. Exactly right. Give me a number, yeah. and right. we'll make it work. And that's exactly, exactly. what it was. Joe I'll LaCava. I'll buy you out any time, pal. Joe LaCava with us. By the way, a, a Connecticut native mm -hmm. who's been here his entire life, who's had a great career pre-Tiger, was yep. with Freddie Couples right. for a long time. Right. Were you on his bag at the 92 uh, P, uh, Masters champion? You know, I'm showing my age, but yes, I was. There you go. So he was there with Freddie in 92, then was with Dustin Johnson for a few years. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. World's number one, and now with the guy who was number one for longer than anybody, uh, Tiger Woods. Listen, the thing that was amazing about us, Joe, watching that, that <laughs> final round Sunday is that, as you well know, the front nine was a completely different dynamic depending on what was happening in Tiger's bag. From the tee, didn't hit a fairway. With an iron in his hand, it didn't matter. From a bunker, from the rough... It was a stripe show, his iron play. Did you see that iron play coming in the warm up in the warm up session? You know, in the warm up session he never missed an eight iron and they have track man on the range. So and again, we're all pretty good on the range. I get that part of it. But you know, his ball wasn't curving much on the range. He was dialed in, you know, his, his forearm was going two eighteen, two nineteen, two twenty. Uh the eight iron was going one sixty six, one sixty seven, one sixty eight and dropping on the same pin eight or ten in a row. So his irons were pretty dialed in over the weekend. He fought a little bit off the tee, but like you said, he made up for it from wherever he was and made the most of it. You know, we go back to Saturday, the back nine, I'm telling you guys, I don't know if he did quite as well as he did over the week on Sunday, but if he could drop a couple of those putts on Saturday, certainly would have made life a lot easier come Sunday, but all in all, it was a great, great iron play all weekend. No, I agree with you, Joe, because I was watching that back nine. I think there were five or six straight greens where he had a birdie putt inside 20 feet and nothing dropped. I mean, people like, oh, the back nine gave him problems. I'm like, you were watching Saturday if, if you think that the back nine is – I mean, he he hit those irons well. They, You're right, nothing dropped on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, he, he literally – he couldn't uh, – Tenny made a nice par, but he could have buried 11 through 18, including an eagle. When I say could have, I mean, they're not all 10-footers and 8-footers, but he had a shortish one on 12. I mean, he basically had a 7-footer right edge on 14, and then he had a great look for eagle on uh, 17. So – you're right. I mean, he he could have shot could have shot 30, 32 probably would have been realistic on that back nine on Saturday next, shooting even par, and that was the difference come Sunday. But that tells you how good he was hitting the irons both days. Talking to Joe LaCava, Tiger Woods caddy since 2011. Again, caddy for Freddie Couples for more than 20 years as well. Dustin Johnson as well, as Trey had mentioned. So take us inside the ropes a little bit where we, we'll never be able to go. And when Tiger is struggling off the tee like that, and really for any any caddy, for any golfer, that relationship of what's the conversation? When you hear announcers saying or people on Twitter, so he, uh, Joe's got to take that driver and snap it over his knee and not let him use it. What, what goes on? What are those conversations when the struggle is off the tee or really anywhere on the course? That's a great question, Mike. Um, you know, for example, on Sunday, we get up there on on, on – number nine, and he's got a two iron in his hand, not a very hard fairway to hit. 
And I basically just kind of whispered to him over the ticks. I don't want to make a big deal, but I said, look, let's just try to find some rhythm and timing, take that r- rain swing here and hit this fairway. And I, find, and I had to kind of, you know, make a light moment. I said, it can't be that hard. I think I could hit this fairway. <laughs> and so, of course, sure enough, he follows up probably with the worst tee shot of the morning. I mean, hit it way left, almost out of bounds. And that's when he says, I can't swing with the shirt on. It's sticking to me. It was all hot. As you know, he went through three shirts a day because it was yeah, so hot right. down there. So he ends up changing the shirt, and that's when he hit that nine iron to about 10 feet. I'm not saying that's the reason he started playing decent golf after that, but it's funny. You have to say certain things to these guys, and sometimes you have to make light of it because, you know, we had not hit a fairway. Sometimes I joke, you know, so that Tiger can hear going down certain holes, I'll joke to the other caddy. I said, how are the fairways? Are they in good shape today? <laughs> and so, you know, you just try to make a little bit of a light. I haven't seen a fairway. You know what I mean? Oh, that's great. Yeah, you didn't get the first fairway till 10. Oh, I mean, it was, right. it, 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 was, it was unbelievable. Okay, but that, that round, Joe, was in many ways vintage Tiger because, as you said, on that front side, you're three under par, and he didn't hit a fairway. Uh, to me, that shot on seven might have been the defining. I get it. He dropped it on the pin on one, two, and three. And, you know, he missed the shorty on one, but made him on two and three. But when you hit it so far left on seven, and then he ropes that, what was it, a nine iron or eight iron to within 15 feet and made that birdie putt, I think that's when he got the first big fist pump. Did it feel like that really got his round going that day? Uh, I, I think, well, yes. I mean, I think the first couple of holes he played very well. And we got kind of lucky on two when it didn't go in the water. Right. Um, but I think, I think the, the saves on four and five were huge to keep the round going because at that, those are the toughest holes on the front nine. So I think making, you know, pars on four or five, you know, like I said, it's early on, but you sort of want to make bogeys after you've made a couple of burly, birdies early. You could have birdied the first three holes, birdie two of the first three, but you wouldn't want to fall with two bogeys and even par in the six T, which is a tough hole as it is. So I think the par stays on four and five were huge to keep the momentum going. 